Hello guys, today I want to have fun with parallel computing, parallel programming and this is done through MPI, message passing interface. So basically I'm talking about the messages which are sent between the processes and the processes can run actually on different nodes of a cluster for example or on a single machine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do hello world example on Ubuntu for example, uh, this time and in the next video probably I will do scientific Linux. What is MPI? Very good explanation about the MPI you can find in the link here, MPI tutorial. By the way, link to this mind map I will put under the video in the description so you will find the links to very uh, useful resources and I told you already about one of them. This is a MPI, uh, MPI tutorial it explains what MPI is. It basically says that historically before 1990 the programmers were not that lucky and they have to write their own implementations for interprocess communication and as I say processes I don't mean threats because the threats are happening inside of processes. I'm talking about the process which can run on different computers, different machines in a cluster. And since I have a cluster, this is a very interesting topic for me because uh, I can do a high performance computation on the cluster. I can uh, split the, the jobs and uh, do the different things on different machines and after that communicate the results. So that's why it's so interesting to me. As I said here in the MPA tutorial, in an MPA tutorial you can read about this information. Game. Let me zoom in MPA tutorial.com and as I said the links can be found in the mind map. A link to the mind map will be put in the description of the of the videos. So we have a lot of things to cover and as I said it's just a getting started tutorial. It comes to complement all the data and resources which can be found in internet. So in the MPA tutorial website you can read about the beginner MPA tutorial, introduction about what MPI is, what was the history of the MPI. Basically what it is, is I already described it to you, is the way to communicate between the process, the way to do a parallel computation and parallel programming. Here you can find a hello world code example which I'm gonna use. The big challenge here is just to install everything what is necessary on one of the Linux distributions. In this video I'm choosing this to be the latest version, the latest greatest version of Ubuntu if I'm not mistaken is 14.04.2 uh, long, long term support. Okay. A link to the MPI CH, which is one of the MPI implementations, can be found on the previously mentioned uh, website. But here it is, the home for MPI CH. MPI CH is a, one of the implementations of the MPI, which comes from message passing interface. There is another, there is another implementation which is called Open. MPI and this implementation I'm gonna cover in the next video as I said in the next tutorial I'm gonna use scientific windows uh, scientific Linux not window, uh, not windows with open MPI okay let me see something else comprehensive comprehensive MPI tutorial as I said you'll find in the mind map very interesting links uh, very useful link is this one as well Ah, it's too long but hopefully you will see it in the tutorial in the video let me zoom in a little bit so you will be able to see it it describes how to install MPI CH2 on Ubuntu machine I'm gonna alter a little bit this I'm gonna use it but not entirely I'm gonna do something else a little bit different so MPI CH, this implementation of the MPI is mainly supported by Argon National Laboratory. Okay, so 1992 they came up with a standard about the 
message passing interface because this was the main way for interprocess communication 1994 actually the standard has been created MPI 1 and not long after that different implementations emerged on the horizon and we are gonna use one of them so now what I'm gonna do as I said is MPI CH on Ubuntu the latest version okay and on top of that as you can see I'm on Windows machine this Ubuntu will be installed as a virtual machine on this Windows computer this Windows host, host computer there are many ways to go you also can use Vagrant for example or uh, Vagrant or Docker to install virtual machines on your Windows box and after that, that try that try the uh, the computation the parallel computation or you can go on uh, Amazon Web Services Elastic Computation 2 and create a server all this can be found how should be done can be found for example on MPI, to MPI tutorial I'm not gonna cover that so MPICH on Ubuntu which is running as a virtual machine on Windows 7 if I'm not mistaken 46 bits so I did already this I'm using here Oracle VirtualBox and VMware Player which both of them are free Oracle is open source with Oracle I haven't been very lucky let me look at here VirtualBox I installed everything I'm gonna show you that I have installed everything as I'm gonna do it right now in front of you but it didn't work very well so I try Ubuntu 1404.2 desktop AMD 64 64 bits virtual machine I gave it 4 gigabytes of RAM two processors and after that I tried to install the package MPI CH2 unfortunately with apt get install unfortunately it says that there is a problem there are missing headers maybe because my location was Bulgaria if you go to MPI CH site and after that you choose uh, documentation on the downloads sorry on the downloads you get here on the downloads and you can see that Ubuntu MPI CH is available on Ubuntu and if you click here on this link you get to Ubuntu website and I don't see here Bulgaria probably that's why so when I'm installing I'm afraid this could be a problem so that's why when I'm installing I'm choosing a different location I will say that I'm in America in North America somewhere in North America maybe this was the, the reason I couldn't run MPI CH2 on this 64 bits machine after that I did 32 bits and another thing I noticed is that um, it seems to me the libraries were built for 32 bits mach uh, 32 bit machines so that's why the next time I I choose to install Ubuntu 32 bits 14.04.2 the latest version and I install everything successfully unfortunately so there was something wrong with the uh, graphic environment actually it work it's working but on this virtual box is working very very slow so it's almost um, it's almost not possible to be used so that's why I have chosen another kind of virtualization I decided to use VMware player and VMware player on this machine cannot be updated actually the process of updating started once and because it takes too long I stopped and after that I I saw myself into a trap I couldn't update my uh, VMware player VMware player 
just cleaning up the VMware installation is the, it's a huge job I'm not willing to do that so that's why I'm using an older version of VMware Player I installed Ubuntu on VMware Player successfully 32 bits and everything was working like a charm and just to create this tutorial I'm gonna do the same thing now so I'm gonna choose to create a new virtual machine file create new virtual machine and I'm gonna use uh, I will install the operating system later the system was trying actually the VMware player was trying to use the easy installer ask me just for username and password and for my name and after that tried to install VMware tools and probably because my VMware player is an old version it couldn't install it just stuck the installation just stuck so I'm going this safer way so before actually create the virtual machine or slightly after that you have to download the proper version of uh, the Linux distribution so let me find Ubuntu it's not very difficult uh, for somebody Ubuntu downloads Ubuntu download to fi figure out how to download Ubuntu install Ubuntu and on top of that I'm gonna install desktop because I want to be able to develop on this machine so probably that's why I'm not using Vagrant or uh, or may maybe Docker I just want to go this way install Ubuntu 14.04.2 long-term support using a DVD blah 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 F key okay so which version to install preparing to install this is the installation I don't need the installation instructions I just need to download it get Ubuntu download Ubuntu get Ubuntu Ubuntu desktop Ubuntu desktop download Ubuntu desktop and replace your current operating system it should ask me for the version of Ubuntu. As I told you, I downloaded 64 bits, but I haven't been uh, very lucky to install it here on the virtual machine. Actually, I have been able to install it, but after that, I couldn't install MP, MPICH, so that's why I have chosen 32 bits. Here we go, and click download and slightly after that everything will be downloaded. I'm not gonna cover also how to install a VMware virtual machine. You go to the VMware website, just download the installer, click next, next, next and the virtual machine will be installed for you. So now let me concentrate on installing Ubuntu because the topic is getting started writing the Hello World application with MPICH2 message passing interface so I can start many processes for one uh, for one program okay I can share the work I can split it I can spread the work across my cluster in a different nodes virtual machine file create new virtual machine I'll skip the tedious part and the most time consuming parts so it's gonna be faster for you hopefully you got the idea about the parallel computation and the parallel programming so basically allows me to create the parallel programs and much faster programs this way because uh, if I can spread the work across many different computers and many different processors nodes in my cluster the job eventually could be done much faster this is used actually in the graphic cards in Tesla for example so parallel computing this is one notion of the parallel computing using the message passing interface DVD I'll install the operating system later I told you I'm doing this because uh, it stuck the last version of this player of VMware 
what is gonna be Linux? What Linux is gonna be Ubuntu? Next, Ubuntu 2? No, I'm gonna call it differently. I already have this image file for Ubuntu downloaded on external hard drive. Let me go there and find the Ubuntu. You will do it yourself, you will download it and you will have the same ESO file. So I'm gonna call this installation Ubuntu 14.04.2 as you remember this was the last version. Users to end documents, virtual machines, okay I want my virtual machine to be installed there. Next. And as I said I want to have desktop because I want to do development. I will give to this virtual machine two, C two cores of my uh, CPU. I will gonna give four gigabytes of RAM and I will feel very very comfortable working on this virtual machine. It's almost like working on the host machine. There is no difference with uh, VMware player. Next. Finish and that's it, the machine has been created. If I try to play the virtual machine right now it's gonna tell me that there is no there is no not a, no operating system installed on the hard drive. No wonder why we haven't done it yet. So in any case I'm gonna show you that. Viewer, okay, connect this and here we go. It, it tries to boot from uh, from the network PEX installer. If I hit escape, network boot cancel, PXE ROM, operating system not found. So, control Alt to get out of my virtual machine and to direct input to this virtual machine just press control G, blah blah. Okay, I'm gonna say change CD DVD settings. You could have done this before you even start the virtual machine. And I will say, okay, as drive C, a CD ROM or DVD ROM, use ESO image file. I'm gonna tell you where the ESO image file is. Um, it's on the external drive, Ubuntu. And I want to install this one. Ubuntu 14.04.2 okay so this CD drive will be mount and the installation process will start from there and now I'm gonna say okay restart the virtual machine okay Now there is a lot of time we have to wait so I will skip forward and come back to you when something important happens. Here we go at least we get the Ubuntu logo and now the Ubuntu is installing on the hard drive. Skip forward again Okay, okay, right now, because this uh, live CD is asking me try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu on your disk. Right now I'm gonna shut off my machine and give a little bit more RAM and uh, more cores to this machine so the things will happen faster. Let me see here. I could have done this uh, before even starting but I, I didn't, it's not such a big deal, shut down the machine turning off the machine, yeah shut down this machine right now I'm gonna go to the virtual machine and uh, as I said increase the amount of RAM and the number of the cores control alt and you go alt from the virtual machine screen okay I'm back to my host machine Okay, I think I was waiting enough for this virtual machine to shut down, to this Ubuntu to shut down. I will force shut down. Power, power off. Yes, it's safe right now. I haven't installed anything on the hard drive of this virtual machine, so it's okay. Edit virtual machine settings. I'll give a little bit more power to this virtual machine. 
I'll say 4 gigabytes processors, 2 cores, hard disk 20, okay, that's okay, floppy network network address trans, uh, translation actually you see here we can do a lot of tricks Bridget connect directly to the physical network this is what we could do and we can access this virtual machine from every other computer in the cluster or your network network address translation this is by default host only uh, private network shared with the host only the host can access LAN segment USB controller printer display I will say 3D accelerated graphics I just want everything to happen faster. Okay, so I gave four. I gave it uh, four gigabyte to this virtual machine. Play virtual machine again, and as I said, I will fast forward and come back to you when something important happens. Okay. Actually, let me show you that. It's not going to take too much time. Okay, the installation process started. We're waiting now. We again see the beautiful Ubuntu and the deep purple background of Ubuntu. We see again Ubuntu logo on this purple background. Soon we'll see something else. Again, we see the same and the same screen I will say install Ubuntu of course I don't want to just try it install Ubuntu and I'm gonna choose a different location of Bulgaria as I told you already if you go to the website of MPICH and after that go to the Ubuntu website packages you'll see that there is no BG here and I don't know I don't want to go and manually change uh, the settings right now I just want to get up and running as fast as possible Okay, I say install Ubuntu. I think I said already that, but let me try again. I want to be installed in English. I don't want to install the tools. As I said, these tools are uh, old one, obsolete, and uh, they cause a lot of problems on, on my machine. On the newest version of the player, probably VMware player, they probably will work perfectly. Remind me later, I don't need them anyway. Uh, has at least uh, 6.4 gigabytes available drive space, is connected to the internet. Yeah, all these requirements are fulfilled. Continue. Preparing to install Ubuntu. I'll fast forward again and back and come back again to you when something important happens. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. Yes, of course. I want to erase the disk. Use uh, logical volume management, which is the new Ubuntu installation. Uh, no, not, not right now. Install now. I don't care, actually. I'm using uh, logical volume uh, management. I find it very, mm, very nice. Sometimes it's useful. If you continue the changes in this below, blah, blah, the following partitions will be created. Continue, of course. No, this is what I'm talking about. I will say that I'm the Regina, for example. Continue. And I told you why I'm doing that, because if you come here, you'll see that uh, MPI CH package is not located in these mirrors. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but as I told you, as I told you, the installation wasn't successful and I had successful installation with the settings which I'm just showing to you. Continue English. You can drop me one email or uh, leave a comment. So my name Stoyan. Password, I'm gonna keep it simple. Password, password, require my password to login. Weak password, I know that but I don't care continue nobody's gonna touch this virtual machine in any case I'm gonna remove it after this tutorial probably I'm not gonna use it who knows so I will go full screen mode hopefully the recorder will continue recording 
Ubuntu. Full screen. Fast and full of new features, the latest version of Ubuntu makes computer easier than ever. Here are just a few cool new things to look out for. Okay, so I have to admit that I'm still using Windows because uh, of many programs which I cannot use on Ubuntu or Fedora or other Linux distribution. But I always think about switching completely to Linux. I made several attempts uh, two, three years ago, uh, which wasn't such success because I always needed something and I always needed dual boot. Probably the dual boot for me right now is the perfect solution. But virtualization also gives me a lot of uh, options. Say goodbye to searching the web for new software. With Ubuntu Software Center you can find and install new apps. Uh, by the way, I don't mind searching the net for, uh, for software and not having everything centralized. This doesn't give me a, a good feeling. Uh, when I, when everything is concentrated in, in one place, I don't know why, to put all my eggs in one basket. But that's only me. Okay, Ubuntu comes with amazing rhythm box. I don't listen uh, that much music, so this doesn't concern me. So, uh, Shortwell is a handy, blah blah, I also don't uh, use that very much. Honestly, I'm using Photoshop, GIMP, I'm missing some things from Photoshop when I'm using GIMP, but I may try to switch to GIMP completely. We'll see that in the future. So far, I just uh, continue using Windows. And by the way, I'm doing C-sharp development, which also requires Windows, or Mono Developer. But Windows with Visual Studio, it's very good solution. Ubuntu includes Firefox. I'm happy with Firefox. Flash, Chromium. That's fine. That's fine. So, LibreOffice. Okay, I have all this. And uh, accessibility. Yulita. Usability, accessibility, localization, internationalization, translation, everything. Yeah, this is uh, actually what I'm expecting to have anyway. Check out askubuntu.com. Yeah, the guys are very friendly. Mm, I shouldn't speculate on that, but uh, usually I can find everything what I'm searching for on the blogs, so I don't even have to ask questions. So, in other words, I'm a lurker. <laughs> uh, but if you can find the answers, why to ask que questions? Yeah. Okay. Let me go back and just fast forward now. I don't want to waste your time with this installation. Okay, while we are waiting for the installation to complete, let me introduce some terms. Communicator defines a group of processes that have the ability to communicate with one another. Rank. In this group of processes, each is assigned a unique rank. It's like a unique identifier. Communications, point-to-point -point communications. Okay, a process may send a message to another process by providing the rank of the process. In other words, it's accessing a certain process of the process and a unique tag to identify the message. Okay, another process uh, may discard, for example, the tag, but could answer. Collective communications. There are many cases where processes may need to communicate with each, uh, with everyone else, and the mixtures. Those are the communicator communications. What else? As I said, we are using right now the MPICH2 on Ubuntu. We are going to use MPICH, which is uh, developed by Oregon National Laboratory. There is another implementation open. MPI, which I'm going to cover in the next tutorial. Now, when the installation completes, finishes, I'll do the necessary steps to install the MPI CH on Ubuntu, and after that, we'll do Hello World example. As I mentioned already, multi thread programming also is uh, parallel programming but of another kind. 
because uh, the threads share the same memory and also they're within a process. We are talking here about the multi-process communication done with uh, message passing interface and the processes can run on totally different machines. Of course, can run on the same machine. We can use uh, Amazon Web Services Elastic Computation 2, EC number 2, to create a cluster and install there on the computers uh, MPI CH, for example, this implementation CH2 or Open MPI, and practice again the parallel programming. But right now on the single machine I'm uh, with the virtual machine I'm uh, demonstrating this concept. The communication between the processes is uh, done by sockets, I believe. This is speculation, I have to check this. But this is the normal way of interprocess communication by sockets. So we'll see how the the programming is done. Actually in the MPI tutorial, the guy says that you have to have a basic knowledge of C++, so you have to be familiar with C programming language and Linux operating systems eventually. MPI, of course, has implementations for Windows. But I'm not covering this in this tutorial. Yeah, the installation is complete. It is complete. You need to restart your computer. Okay, I'm restarting now. So this is what it says, Ubuntu virtual machine, not sure that I can remove it, but let me try. Connect settings, come on, use a physical drive, Ubuntu, say OK. Click here, press enter, and we'll see what happens, VMware. OK, the installation media has been detached from the computer on the virtual machine. Let's see now what happens. Is the assuming driver cache, wrong chip version. SMBus, keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully, it's gonna work. Usually works. I didn't use the easy installer. I manually installed the operating system, which is not a bad thing. Come on, I'm not gonna fast forward here because I hope that uh, it's gonna be fast. Ubuntu will boot fast. Yeah, okay, so. My password. I'm in. Let me go to full screen mode. Hopefully, it gets recorded. This is the real speed of the virtual machine. My hard drive is not SSD, so it's not that fast, but 7200 uh, uh, RPM. And it should be 7200, so it should be fast enough. This is this much faster, of course. 6 gigabytes per second. SATA 3. Okay, let me change the screen resolution. System settings. Not very responsive. On computer like responsive design, 800 by 600, so uh, what resolution should I choose here? Not this one. Probably this should uh, be okay right now. Apply. Keep this configuration close it and now wow it's too big of course I didn't uh, I didn't think about the fact that my host machine actually is running 72 
ISP system settings screen display um, 72p what to choose here something smaller I don't see enough resolutions right now so let me go down Okay, probably uh, for our purposes this one should be okay. Keep this configuration. We don't have much things to do and most of the things we are gonna do in the terminal window. So now, search terminal. You can run the terminal now. It's slow. Come on. Run the terminal. Or another way to do it is Control Alt F1, for example. F2. Hopefully, this is gonna work. Okay, let's stick with the terminal. Let's say PVD. Who am I? Historian. Let's install now MPACH2. So, in order to do that, we do sudo apt advanced package tool get install and let me copy, let me see again the comment. I'm gonna type by the way you can see the original article credit goes to this guy Anton Dunshin you can look at here directly install lip seer lip seer def mpi ch2 mpi ch2 and if you want to get the documentation as well, we have to add mpich 2 doc. Thank you, Anton. sudo apt get install libcrdev. The guy describes why he's installing this. Actually, there is no description, but at least added libcdiv do it to comment on out. I'm not gonna read that. In any case, ellipsier def mpi ch mpi ch2 doc, including the documentation. Click enter, password for Stoyan, and I'll leave this running. G also gets installed because it's a dependency. G lip ocl. Okay, yes, and everything will be installed. I will let this uh, running and record it just to forward later to be able as a reference to see what's going on here. I'm curious to see, so CA, okay, it's downloading from CA from Canada. Archive Ubuntu com Ubuntu, I believe, CA or it's one of the states in the United States. I have to check where this this location is. In any case, word leap fortran also dependency. Hopefully, it's not gonna take too long. You can uh, watch this tutorial by doubling the speed or uh, make the speed 1.5 or 1.25 whatever it's comfortable for you usually what I do is I double the speed of the videos when I can understand what the guys are talking about okay G Fortran as you can see a lot of packages gets installed and after that we'll try some of the standard comments 
one of them is MPI C C MPI C plus plus for the C plus plus programs. Notice that for the C plus plus programs, you have to use MPI C plus plus MPI hello C C. Okay, and when everything gets downloaded here, I'll run the browser. Oh, voila, we have it already. So let me try that. MPI CC, which is the wrapper of GCC, and it helps us to compile and link the program written with MPI C, with MPI minus minus help, just to make sure it works. MPI C plus plus. Pay attention to that. Use it when you use uh, C plus plus commands with extension, for example, programs with extension C. Uh, CC for example help for bug reporting blah 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 let me see now the runner MPI exec is the standard runner help and some of the implementations actually have a, another command which is called MPI run MPI run minus minus help so I have everything necessary let's create a command pvd ls minus ls uh, minus la to see what I have here and let me run the browser go to the tutorial here or to mind map copy the hello world example create it in this folder compile and run just to make sure everything works. Okay, did I click Firefox? Yes, I did. So let me do MPA MPA tutorial in the virtual machine. MPA tutorial dot com. Hopefully everything works fine. Beginner MPA tutorial. Introduction installation on a single machine. You can follow these tutorials and latest version of MPI, blah 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 blah. Hello world is somewhere down down. Up next MPI Hello World lesson. Install MPI C H2 lesson. I already did it. Hello world example. I'm gonna copy this and paste it in my text editor. I'm gonna run now edit text editor. I'm not gonna use V right now on Vim or Vim. I'm not gonna install it, not gonna waste your time and my time to do that. Go back this file is called MPI Hello World C. Back here, save it. All files, blah blah. Unix, Linux. Save the file, go back to the terminal, check if the file is here. It's MPI Hello World C. I hope there is no space here. As you see, there is a space, but let me try now. MPI CC, because this is a C file. MPI C, and I'm gonna compile like. Oh, there is a space. Let me rename this file. Okay, the file has been renamed. Include MPI H main arguments. Let me look at here. MPI init, no, no. Initialize MPI environment. Get the number of processes in world size get the rank of the processes when we use the runner then we 
can say how many processes do we want. Here we get the ranks, get the rank of the process, com rank MPI, get the name of the processor, blah blah, and we print off this, and we are done with that. Let me go back again to the hello world example. Okay, so let's try to compile and run this. So I'm gonna say MP MPI CC MPI Hello World C and the output let's say is MPI Hello World. Wow. No no there are errors some in functions include MPI extra stroking let me fix this okay I copy and pasted this but this is only excerpts from the code so let me go to the github and get actually the real code I have to do this in the virtual machine of course so I'm gonna save myself a little bit time hello MPI hello world C go to the URL which hopefully it's visible here if not I'm gonna show it in the host machine in any case I'm getting here by going to the to MPI tutorials com tutorials MPI hello world and clicking on the MPI hello world so let me do this in the in the machine author Wes Kendall so the credit goes to this guy copy and paste in my text editor include stdo standard lip no mpi init no okay hopefully that works mpi mine okay 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 finalize so we'll see that control s terminal And now, voila, it works. ls minus al, and we can run it like saying MPI exec the number of processes NP2 MPI hello world. Let me check again just to make sure that this is exactly what it's supposed to be NP2, yeah number of processes to hello world let me try that and see if it works hello world from process toy and virtual machine it tells me the virtual machine where it is rank 0 out it gives me the host name of the machine where the process is running rank 0 we said that each one of the processes get unique rank out of two processors two processors let me change this to 4 just to illustrate again what's going on here we go right now all the processes are running on the same machine Stoy and virtual machine rank 0 it's assigned to the first process rank 2 assigned to the second process from 4 processes you can run 10 processes and of course the responsibility to find out how to make the parallel programming parallel computing is up to you how to gonna use this the goal of this tutorial was just to get started with parallel programming and parallel computing. Now you can uh, explore this wonderful world. Hello world is the first example. We got our hands dirty. We have the environment, the development environment to do the parallel computing. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you. Let me just summarize when I wrap up. So I told you what MPI is. It helps us actually for the parallel computing. After that I told you that uh, there are many options how we can do it on a clusters, Elastic Computation 2, Amazon Web Services, on a local machine. I did it on a virtual machine which is Ubuntu here. I also told you the implementations here. I 
show it to you the installation of MPI CH2 implementation and finally we did install it and run one of the programs go to this website MPI tutorial it's a great resource for MPI okay hopefully this was helpful and uh, thank you for watching